so much emphasis has been placed over the last uh, 20 to 30 years on test scores and by no means do I want to say that test scores aren't important but I think that what we're acknowledging and our community is celebrating is the fact that um, it can't just be test scores alone. We also have to ensure that our students leave school with a set of skills to be able to apply the knowledge that is measured through the test scores um, in addition to, uh, to just having the knowledge alone. We have five learning outcomes up on the freshman focus. We focus on agency, we focus on collaboration, and knowledge and thinking, oral communication, written communication, and they all focus on a little bit of different things. Agency is taking ownership of your learning and also having a growth mindset. So it shows up in the classroom in different ways. It can be something as simple as turning in your work on time or actively participating, but agency asks students to go beyond the traditional work ethic grade and has them assume a growth mindset. You get that through rubric-based practices where kids can look, okay, I'm getting graded on agency, here are the components that I need to do in this project or benchmark, so I know I'm getting the proper score that I need to get. So that agency piece is not only the self-reflection, but again, taking care of being to class on time, turning your work in, uh, being able to advocate if you don't understand something and you look at a teacher and say, can you repeat that question or can you give that, can you say it a different way? It's powerful. Collaboration is, I think, one of the more important parts of project-based learning. Uh, during our first couple of projects, we've had students in groups of four. Uh, they've been working together to create group contracts that can, can guide them during their, you know, working relationships. I really do enjoy that we get to work with different group mates and we get like different group mates frequently for each project. It requires students to communicate and work with other people, which I think is a good thing because it brings different ideas and it brings a variety of different mindsets together. The knowledge and thinking, um, you know, is a big component. That's the everyday thing that we're working on. We're trying to get them to investigate and to find some personal connection with whatever they're learning. So the knowledge and the thinking definitely is where we've always gone in education, but now it's just a component of all of these skills that we want the students to have. Knowledge and thinking, I think, most closely aligns to how students have been assessed traditionally. So that's where teachers check to see whether or not students have met their content standards. They're asking them to solve problems, uh, come up with solutions, and demonstrate their understanding of those core content standards. Uh, within the knowledge and thinking uh, outcome. Project-based learning helps collaboration, agency, and new forms of communication. Because along with written communication, you also have oral communication with your peers. We really want our students to be able to voice what they're learning as well. So not just you know write it down or put it on a document. We want them to be able to share what they're learning um, so that we can assess them on that oral communication. So that might be them just sitting with a partner and sharing with them. That might be just sharing with our small group or ultimately it could be them making a presentation in front of the whole class or community members as well. There's always some type of oral interaction that every person has to go through and part of high school is supposed to prepare you for the real world. So having your ability to communicate being a graded aspect of the learning process I think it's a beneficial thing. You have to be able to address somebody in a helpful situation, you, and you have to be able to look people in the eye. Those are important skills to have to learn, and we have to teach those skills to our kids. So I think written communication is, is pretty flexible, uh, just in terms of the projects that we are offering. Um, written communication could be in the form of, of writing a persuasive business proposal, which our students did during Project 1. It could be in the form of a comparative analysis, which they're getting ready to do uh, during our Age of Revolutions unit. So I think written communication is very versatile. It can be, um, it can come in a variety of different forms. It's not always just looking at grammar either. So for example, my health class wrote a script and I had our theater head come in and tell them how it should be written. One of the rubrics says conventions, uses the conventions of the discipline. So in that case, did they follow the script? Did they italicize action? Did they use um, the word with the colon for whoever's speaking? Writing looks a little different within a math classroom. We are actually having the students um, making sure that they are using complete sentences when they are identifying or explaining 
um, a problem that they have to justify their answer. Like we know you got a number for an answer, but what does that number mean? What is it telling you? And how did you get there? Our parents are used to using the, the system Skyward, right? And now we're utilizing what's called Echo. And within Echo, when you pull up your uh, students' individual class grades, and then they'll also see what they're graded on in terms of, this is the percentage they're getting for knowledge and thinking. This is how well they're doing in agency. This is how well they are collaborating. They're not communicating orally enough. This is what they need to improve. A rubric is a, like a sliding scale, okay? So the lower end of a rubric is like an emerging um, set of guidelines, okay? And then at the very top end, you've got something like exceptional. Uh, historically, uh, schools have, have talked about the skills that we're trying to teach as soft skills. Uh, but what we're trying to do is to elevate those to, uh, to, to more essential skills that are necessary for success in today's life and economy. The skills are important because um, skills let our students figure out any problems and work with people and collaborate. Um, and the knowledge comes with that, right? We want them to gain knowledge as they're doing that, but if, if they can figure things out for themselves and, and develop those skills, we know that they'll be successful. Your path is our purpose, right? We are preparing you for your path, whatever that path may be. We know that you need those skills to be successful when you leave here, right? So it's really putting an emphasis on them fast and early, their ninth grade year, and hopefully it's something that we can build on each year while they're here at Bay City Central, that when they are leaving, they're well-rounded citizens, they're able to go out there, they're able to critically think, they're able to collaborate with people, they're able to be on time, they're able to be supportive, just really building all those skills so that they're successful when they leave. When you leave here and you're in that post-secondary world, whether or not you're going to college or in a career, or the military, trades, all of that, you basically have to have these skills to do any job. Um, you're going to have to work with people, you're going to have to write, you're going to have to speak. I'm excited, I'm energized, and I'm looking forward to what's going to come. I love the teachers here. The, my favorite thing about school is just uh, interacting with everybody, just um, interacting with the teachers, the students, the, the environment in general is great. So. I just love coming here. It's definitely making me feel better about after my high school life. It's making me feel encouraged to go out and do something.